sixth and final day of timed competition consisted solely in the cross test with minimal opportunities for teams to recover ground lost earlier in the week. The route to and completion of the final stage is nonetheless crucial for teams to get over the line with their riders intact. Fourteen remaining women riders lined up for their final test and the last opportunity to restrict Australia's unstoppable run to victory. Finland's Sanna Kirkinen took the whole shot but was quickly overhauled at the first turn by Tyler Jones and Jessica Gardner, the Australian duo who would go on to open up a gap of over a minute at the front. Gardner was the initial leader but Tyler Jones resumed her role as the front-running female on her way to overall victory. With first and second on the day, the top three places locked out overall. The Australians fell less than five minutes short of a stunning one-hour victory margin. Gemma Wilson was restricted to sixth on the final test, five riders from four different nations ahead of her, but there was no touching Jones or Gardner, a minute clear at the close of the race. Yeah, we are really happy with getting our three in a row this year. Um, we had a good run all week and had no dramas, so we're stoked with the, getting the championship back. Catching Australia was already an impossible task for runners-up France as they relied on two unlikely retirements for the women from down under. But instead, four of the top five teams had a full complement of three finishers. Finland held on for fourth overall despite the standout day six performance of Rachel Guttish. Jamie McCanny held a substantial one-minute individual advantage over Anthony Boissier and Cristobal Guerrero in E1, but all eyes were on the French representatives in their bid to hold the lead and take a second consecutive World Trophy. With just over 10 seconds eventually separating the top five in this end-of-week sprint, Josep Garcia would have been grateful to find the early lead ahead of Joshua Green of Australia who slipped back. Jamie McCanny moved into second, but the focus in terms of World Trophy riders was on France, who provided two front-running finishers, both within a minute of the race victory. Boissier was never likely to make up enough ground to take the overall E1 victory, and McCanny's performance guaranteed top spot in the class to also aid Great Britain's time. Josh Green, meanwhile, had done his bit to get the better of the French representatives, the Australians would need a series of even more spectacular finishes in the other two categories. E2 was the closest of the three groups coming into the final day of competition, but a 30-second advantage looked set to be enough for Ryan Sykes on an individual level. Six Australian representatives in class guaranteed that the race would be crucial in terms of both the world and junior trophies. Four of the Australians broke quickly into a pack together, chasing early leader Sipes. Daniel Milner led the Australian charge, putting pressure on the American, but no errors came from the front runner. Ty Simmons moved up to fourth at the expense of Taylor Roberts and behind fellow countryman Bo Ralston. Well down in ninth, Loic Larieux finished behind the three Australians but within 30 seconds of the trio and strong enough to ensure a significant portion of France's lead remained intact. The USA have had a week to forget with two retirements leaving them second to last but Sipes' week-long performances have given them something to cheer. With three of their trophy riders in E3, there were plenty of cross fingers for a smooth race from the France camp. The Italian representatives took the best starts, Oscar Belletti trailing his fellow countryman Davide Gonani and Manuel Moni. Belletti and Bellino have been involved in an individual scrap for second in class, 
first of the trophy runners in E3. And it was Bellino who held sway in that fight as he moved into third in the race. Australia's Daniel Sun has finished fourth, enough to take first in class and fourth overall individually, but not enough to make it a sixth consecutive day as fastest junior trophy rider. That honour went to Ty Simmons as the duo pushed their team towards victory. With the top E3 performer Sanders competing at junior level, Australia looked to Lachlan Stamford, who finished three places behind Bellino of France, Gnerni taking the race victory by 18 seconds over Moni, but the Spaniards, performing generally better on the test, held on to third overall. Yeah, the Australian junior team really performed well this week. We had uh, three new riders and never done a six-day. So, um, yeah, they had an absolutely, you know, sensational race. So, uh, and myself, um, just... I performed well and rode really well. Australia took the junior trophy for the first time in their history and it clearly won't be long before Ty Simmons and Daniel Sanders move into the senior team. The three-way battle for third in the Junior Trophy remained static on the final day. Australia comfortable winners and Sweden an isolated second. Thank you. Yeah, we are really all really happy about this result because as you everybody knows, it was a really tough race and with a lot of happening, you know, and at the end, we still win, uh, the Australians were fast, in America also, Spain also, it was really not easy, but with my teammates we did the job and we are on the top of the step and that's the most grateful we could get from that and we are really happy about it. A fourth World Trophy victory in succession for France who took a final winning margin of just over a minute from one-time leaders Australia. A close race for first, but Australia had too much work to do on the final day of the week. Spain held comfortably on from Italy for third. The six days of enduro now moves on to Spain for 2016, where two different nations will defend their three hard-earned titles. Just to symbolise that the organisational stuff is going on. 